welcome Mr. Bert Mueller to uh, Decode. Uh, Decode is the podcast where we, t- we talk to leading pioneers from the F&B industry today and we're thrilled to have you on board. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, we'd like to get started understanding the story behind California Burrito. First, I want to understand the name, all right? So I haven't been to the U.S., so do people in California eat burritos more often? Do you get better burrito there? What's the story behind the name? Why California burrito? So I think, you know, the burrito has, has very much been popularized in America and particularly in California. You know, I think back in the uh, you know, 1800s, I think in San Francisco, they said the people working on the railway uh, used to pack their lunch and they'd wrap it in a tortilla. And that's almost where this uh, format became very popular. And uh, over time, you know, the restaurant format became popular in San Francisco, and particularly in the Mission District, uh, which is, is famous for this food, and particularly the style of burrito. You, you know, you, this wouldn't even be that popular in Mexico, uh, mm. but in the U.S., very popular. Uh, and, and, and that's basically where the name came from. We had a chef who joined us at the outset, uh, who is also from California. Uh, and, uh, you know, highlighting the, the history and, and, of course, the core product, yeah. uh, which, which is what we're all about. All right. Uh, that's a fascinating story. Now, let's hear, about, let's hear about you. You were a music composer. You, you, you did the original score for a couple of movies. And, uh, you know, you also spent some time working in a fast, casual Mexican chain in the U.S., and then co-founding California Burrito in Bangalore. Now, something doesn't add up to me. How did this happen? Why uh, Bangalore? Why India? And yeah, can you walk us through your journey? Well, I, you know, I've always been very passionate about food. I think when I was about five or four years old, actually, I set up a, a cafe in my house uh, where I cooked for my parents. So, you know, I think food has always been there in the DNA. And I think it's the creative part of it. You know, it's a, it's a very creative thing. Uh, and, and music is also a creative, uh, you know, uh, domain. And so I was always into music uh, through my uh, childhood and even into college, I studied music. Uh, but when I was in college, uh, you know, I had the opportunity to study abroad. And so I was trying to think, where, you know, what would be somewhere that would really change my perspective? And India, India came to the top of my mind and, uh, you know, had a wonderful time studying here, uh, really learned about the country, I think learned about uh, the market and, and uh, felt really there was an opportunity here to build something in food uh, that could be very special. And so I had completed my studies and at that point I uh, wrote a business plan and roped in mm-hmm. some of my friends and, you know, uh, we moved here right after we graduated and we started up. Which part of the country were you in while you were studying in India? So I studied in Jaipur, uh, which is, you know, a, a little different. Yeah. But when we were writing the business plan, we came across Bangalore and read about that. And uh, it, it became very clear that this was probably the first place we should look. So we looked at real estate in Bangalore and Gurgaon when we uh, had committed to coming here and ultimately decided Bangalore was the, you know, the place for us. And uh, now when you talk about Bangalore, so tell us which year uh, this was and now in Bangalore, you, I'm sure you, when you go around and stuff, the city must feel very different, right? What, if, what, what do you see some of the differences over a decade, like in maybe in terms of what people are eating and so on? So I think I first came to Bangalore in, you know, 2010 and, uh, you know, very short trip here. But when I moved here in, you know, in 2012, uh, the city was, I think, very early into its tech uh, phase, uh, and it was not quite as large. And you know, over you know the time I've been here, there's been a huge amount of development. In fact, I was just riding around uh, two days ago, and just in the last COVID year, I could see a huge amount of infrastructure that's changed. Uh, you know, I hadn't been traveling that much, so. A, a tremendous change in terms of infrastructure, in terms of the number of people. I think it's like one of the fastest growing cities in Asia, which makes it a very dynamic place. Uh, and then also, you know, in terms of food, I think, you know, pe- people's tastes have, have really elevated over this period yeah. of time. And, uh, you know, expectations have gone up at the same time, the market, you know, and the supply chain has improved. Um, so, you know, there's just rapid change. I would say is the the overarching sentiment. 
So talking about California burrito, uh, how many outlets do you guys have today? I know you guys are live in Bangalore, Hyderabad, and Gurgaon. I think there was a short time in Chennai as well. I have a friend who lives in Chennai who was an ardent fan, so he wanted me to shout out uh, oh. <laughs> to you for this video. And I told him I'm going to mention him on this video. So, so what's your expansion strategy? How did you identify these cities, and have you found success there? So. You know, we're, we're operation right now. We have, uh, you know, we had 37 stores pre pandemic out of which about half of them were in a business park. So right now we're operating with 20 stores and we hope that the rest will come online over the course of the next 12 months. Uh, and, you know, we're in, we're in Gurgaon and we're in Hyderabad. So we have a, a two stores running in, in Gurgaon. We have three stores running in Hyderabad, uh, Chennai, we had dipped our toe in, uh, but ultimately found it was probably not quite uh, the right time to yeah. enter there. Although, you know, looking, looking back, I think maybe if we'd had a different property strategy, uh, it would have worked. Uh, it would just, uh, unfortunately, went, went for a business park rather than a mall. And I think if we'd opened in a mall, it would have been a big success there, uh, like we found in Hyderabad. Uh, so we really like uh, Hyderabad market. It's been very wonderful to us. Uh, and De Delhi, or Gurgaon, I should say, has uh, it taken a little time, but ultimately it is a very promising place. And uh, you know, we're confident over the course of the kind of the next two years, we're going to be able to add, you know, at least 15 stores in each of those cities and, and, and be quite profitable there. Uh, that's great to hear. You know, all the four cities that you mentioned, I grew up in Chennai. I'm right now in Gurgaon. I spent oh. like uh, yeah. <laughs> last year, I was in Hyderabad. And before that, I was in Bangalore. So when I was in Bangalore, uh, you know, one of my friends who was working there one day said, you know, I'm going to order you some food. And he said, I'm going to order California burrito. I didn't know what California burrito was. And uh, so I was like, yeah, you know, just, just order me something, right? Which is normally like a very easy thing to do. And he was like, hey, what do you want? And I was like, I don't know, just pick something. He was like, no, you, you, can, you can customize it. What size do you want? What variety do you want? <laughs> uh, how did you yeah. kind of, you know, identify that this is going to be the, the, the strategy where users get a lot of customizability in the way they order food? Because I'm sure in India, at that point, there weren't too many options, maybe Subway and so on. But there weren't too many other options where people could choose what they wanted. So I, I wouldn't say we've innovated a lot on the format per se, the ordering format. You know, this format is, 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 is a, you know, Chipotle or Qdoba or Moe's or, you know, quite a few other people have uh, popularized this format. And I think even before this, this was kind of where, uh, you know, the mission style burritos from San Francisco, this was the format in a way. Um, so I wouldn't take any credit for that mm -hmm. piece. I think, you know, what we've done a little differently is, is some segmentation in price. Uh, uh, India has, you know, a purchasing power. It, it ranges quite a bit. And so trying to make it so that everyone has an opportunity to order something uh, for them. So I think ultimately one of the mantras for us is, that, you know, a participation in the creation of your food and then also accessibility. A and that's where that piece comes into play. And uh, how have the last... 12 to 15 months been, I'm sure it's been a whirlwind journey with everything that's happened, but uh, what are some of the challenges you guys have faced and how have you overcome it? Well, ultimately, you know, there's been challenges on sale. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a big challenge if, if overnight half of your stores are no longer viable for, you know, for the, for the foreseeable future. Uh, that being said, I think we've worked very hard uh, and, and tried to, to optimize every aspect that we can. And, you know, at the, in March, we were at, even though we just had about 52% of our stores open, we were at about 75% of our sale from uh, pre-COVID. Uh, so I think that's, a, that's a, a testament to kind of finding optimizations and, and, and boosting sales through marketing and, uh, you know, hopefully improving product. I think we yeah. have, have better ratings and better repeat. Uh, from our customers. So we keep working hard to do that. And I assume this year will be a similar uh, a, a journey, uh, hopefully one that, you know, goes a little faster than last year. You know, we have your testimonial on our website. So a lot of people when doing research have probably seen this. So a lot of people watching this video will probably recognize you. But in that video, which was shot, you know, a couple of years ago, you tell us that 35% of your orders come from online channels. I'm sure that's changed. Uh, today, I mean, maybe it's unfair to ask you right now, but a couple of months ago in Feb and March, what percentage of your orders were all online? So it was exactly the opposite. It was a 65% online, 35% offline. All right. Yeah, and uh, I'm sure that's been, uh, you know, uh, a challenge you've had to navigate with all the different aggregators and maintaining your own channel. And there are new 
you know, options coming out as well. So yeah. how do you think about your channel strategy, managing the aggregators, managing your own channel, so on and so forth? Well, um, you know, as far as managing it goes, obviously Urban Piper is our partner there and, and very important, especially as more channels come on board, like Dot Pay is now mm. uh, making a good effort. And the, of course, Amazon has come into the picture. Um, as far as you know, the brand, we always try and maintain the same products across. Uh, you know, now we've gotten into some non-customizable products on Swiggy and Zomato for people who are not as you know interested in spending the time to customize their yeah. meal. Um, you know, I think also we don't you know try to index too much on one particular channel. We're you know friendly with Swiggy and Zomato and Dot Pay and Dunzo and. Mm -hmm. Our own channel, of course, is, is, is a small one, but one where we have a lot of very loyal customers. Um, so yeah. I think it'll only, the, the, you know, the, the number of offerings will probably keep growing even further in terms of channels. And uh, so very important that Urban Piper is there with us. Mm -hmm. um, and something also that you know, I would comment about Urban Piper and, and this pro product called Prime that they came out with the app. And uh, yeah. that's been a tremendous help for us. Uh, you know, one, I think a little bit innovative thing that we have is instead of having a call center, mm. you know, we route calls to our employees. And so uh, by having that app, you know, they can quickly log in, see the order and, and then route that concern to the store. Right. Uh, so it's given a tremendous visibility into menus being turned on and turned off. And uh, also, uh, you know, empowered us to, you know, many people would pay lax for a call center. So we, we just give a little extra money per call to everybody in our company. <laughs> That's uh, great to hear. You know, I'm just going to take you back to something you mentioned, which was marketing and customer segmentation, so on and so forth. Uh, I went through your Instagram. It's very interesting. You got about 7,500 followers there. And there's a lot of, uh, you know, the, the memes that you guys do and uh, there's all sort of engagement on it. How do you guys think about marketing? Do you have a designated team that works on it? Or is it some of the ideas you guys get together and have someone execute it for you? So I'd say it's very democratic. It's all done in house um, with our team here. Uh, and I think marketing was something that we were very, uh, you know, hadn't explored much pre pandemic. And now we started exploring it more and exploring it through different channels. So Instagram, of course, is one channel uh, that we like to engage with people on. You know, another channel we discovered is, is Google Business. Uh, you know, I, I was just shocked at how many vi visitors our Google Business pages get that's through, you know, maps. And so optimizing those pages and, and communicating with people there. Uh, and then, of course, with Facebook and, uh, you know, SMS a little bit now, but, uh, you know, trying to keep that one to a minimum. Okay. I mean, that's great insight you gave us about Google Business because this is the stuff people don't normally realize it's only for for normal customers they see what's what's everywhere so they probably think instagram but google business was was a great insight to even restauranters kind of watching this you know i haven't even seen many people using this but it's tremendously powerful we've seen tra you know a great traction with that so i probably shouldn't say it otherwise you know <laughs> Every, everyone's gonna do it <laughs> and then uh and then we'll have to work harder on it but it's really you know it, i think it's one of these underutilized channels where people generally are probably getting their most visibility in fact yeah and i mean you guys will always retain first movers advantage so i mean you're going to have that uh, advantage on people now like a, a brand like yours i'm sure has to remain fresh in the eyes of the customer can you tell us a little bit about uh, Haas Avocado? I, I saw a little bit about, you know, the entire, and you've, I think you've uh, chronicled the entire journey, you know, from like going to the States, picking it out from the farm and today to people's plates, right? So how, how did that innovative uh, in, initiative come about? Uh, so unfortunately it's not today there yet. It, it'll probably, uh, you know, start being in stores next year. All right. Uh, so that it takes time, unfortunately. This is a, this is a very long-term uh, journey, uh, but, I think, you know, the view was, you know, thinking about the future, you know, how do we do, do make a better product? And I think a better product is a more authentic product. You know, this is a, we don't need to try and create some new thing here. We need to, you know, get down to the basics of what really makes great Mexican food and what makes great Mexican food are great ingredients and particular ingredients, uh, many of which don't actually grow in India. Right. And so, you know, while we've always been focused on kind of local sourcing, 
uh, th this was one piece where it didn't exist locally. And so what we've done is we, for a couple of products, including Haas avocados, uh, you know, we, we it, it brought those in to be grown here. And over a long period of time, you know, you cultivate that industry. Uh, so Haas was the first one we worked on and, and our tomatillos have come in. Uh, and then now we're working on chilies as well. Awesome. So I think, you know, over the course of the next 12 to 24 months, you know, in terms of product, it's going to be really uh, very similar to what you get if you went to Mexico. Mm. Uh, and that I think is, you know, a journey we've been on for quite some time. It takes time to do it. Uh, so. Yeah. I mean, it's fascinating to hear that. So now what you're kind of saying is you're combining fresh locally sourced ingredients and great ingredients that, you know, maybe from abroad that's going to come into the Indian market as well. So I can't wait to see what the product, you know, is going to be have in store for the next couple of years. It's uh, good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get to taste it. So. <laughs> Uh, can you it takes me? time to scale up these things. Farming is not a, you know, straightforward. It's a lot of learning and crops take time. And, uh, you know, that's been a big, a big learning for us. We just, you know. Now talking about ingredients and keeping them fresh, I'm sure that's a, that's a huge challenge. Uh, so how do you guys go about kind of maintaining the freshness of your ingredients and some of the other challenges you guys face? So, you know, in our, in most of our stores, we have a big cold room which is an investment that we started making in our second store. Uh, you know, so there's enough space to store, uh, you know, uh, for fresh. Uh, and then of course we get vegetables delivered three times a week. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, a lot of the food is, pre almost all the food is prepped at the store with the exception of sauces, which is a, a kind of a blessing and it's a, a curse. So we're, mm -hmm. we're working on, a, you know, optimizing that exact a, a ratio there. Uh, cause you know, mistakes can happen, but ultimately I think in most cases it leads to a, to a better product. Mm. Uh, so that, you know, that's one piece of it. Um, but you know, supply chain is, is, is certainly developed over the years. It's gotten much better. Uh, we've also gotten out of a scale where there are people who are ready to partner with us, uh, to make the improvements and investments that are required for our product. Uh, so whether it's kind of sour cream or whether it's a cheese, uh, you know, we, we want a specific grate for our cheese, the type of blade they have to buy, you know, people would not invest in that in, in the past, but going forward, you know, we'll probably see that happen. Uh, so there's kind of a small, small uh, uh, growth challenges, uh, but net net, you know, supply chain has really improved over the years. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's great to hear, you know, your passion for the product. It clearly shows in the detail you're going into every uh, small thing that you're talking about. Can you tell me a little bit about your co-founders? There are three of you and, you know, how do you guys coexist? Who takes care of what? Understood. Um, so, you know, uh, Galen and Dutham are childhood friends of mine. And, uh, you know, Galen, I would say, was involved for a short period of time. He actually had a career as an actor. So okay. he was, you know, very into, he got a, a TV show and, and ultimately needed to leave India. So he left in, in 2014. Uh, so, you know, how Dudham and I have split up things is he handles more of kind of BD uh, and uh, the finance and the investors. And I handle in product operations, marketing and HR. Um, generally how things have split over the years. All right. Uh, now I just wanted to ask you about some of the new trends in the industry with cloud kitchens and stuff. Uh, do you guys already have your own cloud kitchen set up? And what's your, do you have a separate strategy altogether for, you know, maybe expansion with cloud kitchens? We do have a cloud. We have two cloud kitchens. Uh, you know, cloud kitchen has to generate a certain amount of sale. Mm. Uh, it's very, obviously every store does, but actually cloud kitchen is a little higher than you'd expect uh, because ultimately, you know, with aggregator commissions and uh, with, uh, you know, marketing, you have to you keep being visible on the platform uh, to grow. Uh, so there's some investments required uh, for a cloud kitchen to work. Uh, you know, I think how we see cloud kitchens is as a supplement uh, to, to you know, probably some very visible stores in a city. So once the brand is known, I think Cloud Kitchen works well. It's worked well for us, uh, but I think it probably hasn't worked as well for other people who are, are just online. And you know, yeah. people don't physically know who these people are. Mm -hmm. You know, the brand does. The brand basically they turn the food into a commodity, and then they can't you know justify any margins on the product. Um, so. 
uh, you know, we, we like Cloud Kitchen. We don't see it as the, the primary uh, a source of restaurants, but maybe, you know, in a city, it winds up being, you know, making a 20 or 15 to 20% of the stores in the city. All right. Uh, now, just talking about technology, what are the sort of uh, technology you guys use, you know, in, in uh, California Burrito? And uh, what are some of the challenges you're trying to solve using tech products? So, you know, we've been using the same ERP for about the past uh, six, six and a half years now. And it's, it's been heavily customized for us. And, you know, I think you always have growth challenges that need to be addressed by, you know, technology. Mm. Uh, and generally these are, you know, helping operations with tech. So some of the things latest we've been working on are, are, are projections by the hour of how much food needs to be prepared. Uh, since there's a, you know, holding time for food, we don't want to over prep. We also don't want to under prep. Mm -hmm. uh, so th that's one place. Of course, temperature checks of employees is another thing that we had to do this year. Uh, now we've uh, come out with a, a, a system for QR codes on the bills so that our customers can redeem their loyalty points uh, when they order on Swiggy or they can accumulate loyalty points uh, when they order on Swiggy. Uh, and then hopefully, of course, they have to come to the store to redeem those. So we mm -hmm. hope to see some a conversion there. But you know, trying to to remain abreast of whatever is happening in the market and addressing, uh, you know, a large concerns with tech. All right. Uh, what's next for California Budito? What can we expect in 2021 and going forward? You know, I think 2021. You know, it's a little unclear right now. Uh, I would have said that it's a it's a great time for expansion. It, it is, but whether that happens this quarter or next quarter, the quarter after that, it, it remains to be seen. Uh, but ultimately, I think the next two years would be, you know, a, quite a few more stores in, in Delhi and Hyderabad and, you know, continued focus on making the product more authentic and developing uh, our farmers that we're working with and, uh, you know, perfecting what we do. That sounds awesome. And uh, I'm sure I think focused on. would be would be the word. Yeah, I mean, best of luck for the rest of 2021. Before we let you go, we want to, you know, do a quick rapid fire to get to know you a little better. So does it sound okay. good to you? All right. Yeah, why not? Okay. First question. Uh, dining in or home delivery? Dining in. Uh, your favorite uh, burrito at California Burrito? Barbecue chicken burrito. All right. Uh, do you have a favorite brand? What do you think about profitability versus growth? You know, uh, I can see both sides. We've always been more focused on profitability. All right. How often do you order uh, from outside? From outside California Burrito or from generally, how often order into food? the house? Yeah. You know, not very often these days, maybe once every two weeks. Okay. Do you have a favorite cuisine? Well, I have to say Mexican, but <laughs> if I had a second favorite, I'd say, you know, I, I'm a big fan of Andra, Andra food. Oh, all right. You can handle the spice. That's quite impressive. I like the spice. So <laughs> mm. your favorite movie, favorite movie. Uh, I, I, I like the uh, movie Apocalypto by Mel Gibson. That's an, I think that's a, a very uh, interesting movie. All right. Uh, a favorite holiday destination? Uh, I took a vacation in Greece, and that was fantastic. And just to wrap it <laughs> up, uh, what do you like doing to relax? I run. I like to jog to relax. Although I started trying to meditate as well. Well, that's a challenging one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you have any words of advice for people watching this video, budding entrepreneurs, restauranters? You know, there are no magic bullets. There are no shortcuts in this business. It's a challenging business. It's a very fun business. It's dynamic. Uh, I would say make sure you have enough capital to do justice to whatever you're trying to do. And uh, your timing and your property should be right. So I'd say, you know, it's, it's a very competitive business. You have to be careful and, uh, and smart and have enough capital. Uh, probably having enough capital would be the key. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, you know, do, do justice to whatever your vision is. All right. And on a parting note, do you have any words for your integration with Urban Piper? 
you know, nothing but positive. It's been, it's been a very wonderful, uh, it's great. It's great to see the innovation that's come into the product. You know, I think many people stagnate, you know, they get comfortable, they get their, you know, their people on board and then they, you know, get very comfortable. But with Urban Piper, we've continued to see a great innovation. I know that they're solving problems that are, you know, important to us. And I feel uh, that's going to continue. Uh, so excited to see what comes next. I have no idea what it will be, but I'm sure it will be helpful. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Bert. I think for this, uh, you know, wonderful free flowing conversation, insights about your life, insights about the industry. And it's been an absolute pleasure having you on Decode. Thanks for taking your time. Out. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Have Take care. Day. Thanks, everyone. Goodbye. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share and leave a comment below and subscribe to stay updated with the latest in the food tech industry with Urban Pipe.